look at the last couple of concepts around nuclear chemistry. So first we're going to look at the applications of nuclear chemistry. So nuclear chemistry is used in a variety of different ways. Uh, so for example, there's fission. So we break apart elements to get energy. So typically what you would see in this type of a reaction, you have some sort of big particle that's being broken up into one or more other particles. So this is kind of, you can kind of think about it as like a, almost like a decomposition. Fission is, you know, you break apart an element into multiple other elements or particles to give up energy. So this is often used in nuclear reactors. This is the most you know, common type of uh, nuclear reactor. Uh, these are also used in fission bombs, so atomic bombs. Fusion, it's combining elements to get energy. This is what people would love to be able to do in, in nuclear reactors, but they aren't able to do that yet. Uh, they combine elements to get energy. So this is the, the big one that we see is in the sun. So it combines hydrogen to make you know, helium or, you know, so you combine, you know, elements to create bigger elements. So you have hydrogen and hydrogen can combine together and you can create helium nuclei or you can go on and create other bigger nuclei. It's also used on Earth when we make new elements. So the, the transuranium, so the elements after uranium, the ones that have the parentheses around them, the synthetically made elements are made use of fusion. They're also used in medicinal chemistry, so they're used for treatments. Um, so the most common one people think about is treatment for cancer, but there's a variety of different other treatments. Also used in various medical imaging, so PET scans, so positron emission tomography um, with carbon-11, there's oxygen-15, there's a variety of different medical imaging scans that use uh, various isotopes. There's radiocarbon dating, so looking at how much of a particular isotope is left over to determine how long ago an organism died, uh, because this is based on uh, carbon-14. So carbon-14 is, uh, you get that into your body as you're, while you're alive. Once you're alive, you are no longer acquiring more carbon-14, um, and it uh, you know, starts to decay. And we can look at how much carbon-14 is left to tell about how old something is, how long ago it died. And yeah, like I said, in weapons, so atom bombs, uranium rounds. This is obviously the least pleasant of our uh, applications, but it is an application of nuclear chemistry. Another thing that uh, often comes up with people questioning about nuclear chemistry is how do we test? So there's a variety of ways to test your radiation exposure. So these links are in the course. There's a periodicity radiation exposure calculator through the national, the, the Nuclear Regulatory Commission. So NRC is the Nuclear Regulatory Commission. There's another one through the Environmental Protection Agency. There's a variety of different agencies and groups that provide radiation calculators. I do suggest taking a moment to go through some of these because things that uh, people tend to think are big sources of radiation tend not to be. So I often get questions about things like cell phone towers and things, but you're not radioactive. They're not giving you radiation. Uh, they're not doing uh, in this context. There's also, you know, sometimes people are like, oh, well, you know, flying on a plane or doing these different things or living by a nuclear power plant. Those all have a lot lower radiation exposure than most, most folks think. So it can be interesting to see where your main sources of radiation are. Often these, the big sources are where you live. So if you live at higher elevation, if you live in a place that has uh, granite or stone, uh, if you have a brick house, you know, those types of things can really make a big difference. Um, if you're a smoker, if you uh, have other areas where you are exposing yourself to radiation regularly. But most people actually have much lower radiation exposure than they expect. So I do suggest taking a look at those.